Welcome back. All right, last videos, we basically learned how to hook up all of our hardware and get it to talk to Cubase. We did some really basic audio and MIDI recording. Now it's time to find out where everything is. All right, here's our basic program with our audio and MIDI tracks recorded. And we're going to talk about zones. So the first one's going to be the inspector zone. That's this guy over here on the left-hand side. That can be enabled and disabled by this three-tab box up here. Click on and off to hide or show it. Same thing with the lower control zone and the right hand tab but for now we're only talking about that the inspector zone all right tab at the top here is the same controls that we see here in the track itself you'll notice in cubase there's lots of ways to get to the same controls and parameters cubase doesn't force you to work a specific way lots of ways to get to the same thing so we can mute and solo and arm tracks and monitor and enable the track overview editor and read and write automation show lanes all that stuff same thing that's shown in here as well. All right, volume, we got panning information here. We can delay the track plus or minus by a certain amount of milliseconds if we're trying to match another track. Down below shows our track presets window. We can load and save track presets, which saves everything related to the track at a glance. All right, input and outputs also visible here. That's the first tab. Second one is track versions, kind of unusual. This means that if, for example, you have a song and the entire arrangement is completed, and you want to do another version of a solo, but don't want to add any more tracks or lanes to the project, or maybe you're out of tracks, or maybe the arrangement changed and you want the solo to reflect that, and you want to stop and go back and forth between the two. Really easy to do and super powerful. We can simply hit the new track version here, start a new recording, for example. All right, so there's our new MIDI recording, and we decide we now liked the other one that we did better. Now we instantly have both of those performances instantly selectable, including all of the edits and comps and work we've done on them. Very, very powerful when you want to switch back and forth between two different ideas. Chord track are one of the kinds of tracks that we can choose to add to our production, as we looked at earlier. And this allows us, we'll get more into this later, but it basically allows us to type in chords numerically like a typewriter. So maybe we're not a keyboard player and we want to enter chords and have Cubase follow that arrangement. We can do that here. Expression map deals with note articulation for notation software, those kind of things. MIDI modifiers is how we transpose the track. Say we like this performance exactly, but we need it to be transposed up two half steps. Easy, easy to do right from here. We can change velocity information. We can compress the dynamic performance of it. All that without affecting the actual performance right there on the MIDI modifiers tab. MIDI inserts are basically just like audio inserts. These are all the plugins, quantize, all that kind of stuff that we can apply to our MIDI performance without changing the MIDI performance at all. This tab looks very much like the one at the top, except because this is a soft synth and it produces audio because it literally has an audio output because this is a software synthesizer, these are all the relevant tabs that relate to the audio output section of that. We'll get to those in a second when we select our audio track. Notepad allows us to enter any relevant information on the track. So for example, we used a Mox F8 on this. Maybe we want to remember that. That can be saved per track and per project. Very, very powerful stuff. Device panel and quick controls basically are ways to create a customized control surface and affect the controls that we use the most often and work the way we want to work right there in Cubase. We'll get more into that as well. If we choose the audio track, for example, we got a couple of additional tabs that are different than the MIDI track related tabs. Track versions work the same, chord track works the same, but inserts are different. This is where all of our plugins reside and there's lots of great stuff to choose from here. So the included amount of plugins and things that come with Cubase are truly mesmerizing, super powerful, lots and lots of really great stuff here. That's all of our plugins. The Strip is an entirely different collection of plugins that work much the same way that a traditional analog mixer does. And they're all shown here. All these can be globally enabled and disabled simply by clicking the blue button. So if we've got a gate and a comp and maybe a DS are going on here, all those can be instantly enabled and disabled. And then our track presets can be loaded and saved here as well for the strip, for the inserts, or the total track. Sends work the same way you'd expect them to. So we can basically 
send something out to maybe we have an aux send that's got a reverb on it or whatever we simply enable the track bring that guy up and now on our audio track we have sends to the reverb audio recording and that can be disabled right here globally simply by clicking on it audio recording and you can and we're back to our dry tracks q sends work the same way for all of our headphone feeds and sends that we have set up for headphone monitoring direct routing is where it goes currently to our main outputs but it could be anything aux channels or group channels fader is a more traditional view of all those settings like i said lots of ways to do stuff so mute solo edit rewrite and automation enable um, our monitor, and then, of course, track faders and panning positions here as well. Notepad works the same way. Quick controls work the same way. And that's a really quick overview of the Inspector tab. Down here on the visibility side of the Inspector tab, we can hide and show tracks. This is not getting rid of them. It's just making them less cluttered in our overall workspace. All right, moving on to the lower zone in our next video, and we will see you there.